guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're back over here at the shop. We got called out to come take a look at a 2016. This is a Kia Sportage. It's got the four cylinder engine. I'm not exactly sure of the liter size, but the engine has an extended crank time and it's stalling out. It also has a check engine light and they've already replaced a number of different parts on it. So let me take you guys over to the vehicle and I'll show you what we're working on. All right guys, so this is our Kia Sportage here. Again, this is a four cylinder uh, GDI engine. So let me take you guys under the hood. You can see that uh, they've already been doing quite a bit of work here. Now, from what they're telling me, the check engine light is storing a code that has to do with low fuel rail pressure. And so the parts that have already been installed into this vehicle are the GDI fuel pump, the pressure sensor that's on the fuel rail underneath this intake manifold, and the fuel pump that's in the tank. However, even after replacing all these components, the check engine light still comes on and it still has a pretty long crank time. So I've got the key right here. We're gonna go ahead and try to start it. Well, this flip key doesn't open. Come on, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the key into the ignition. We're gonna crank the engine over. And hopefully you guys could hear that, but there was a pretty long extended crank there. Now the engine did start up and it is running right now. It's running pretty poorly, but we do have a check engine light right here. Let me take you guys under the hood. All right, as you guys can see, the engine is running. It's misfiring, shaking a lot. It's really running rough. So the first thing I wanna do is connect the scan tool and we'll take a look at some data. All right, guys, so today we are using the X tool. This is the IP819 TP version. So let's go ahead and connect the scan tool and see what data we can pull up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect the dongle. We're gonna go into diagnosis. We're gonna select Asia. Then we're gonna find Kia right here. We're gonna go to automatic detection. It's going to automatically detect the VIN number. And there we have it, a 2016 Kia Sportage. We'll hit yes. We're gonna go into system selection. Now this X tool guys is a full blown professional level scan tool that does not only bi-directional controls, reads live data, has the ability to communicate with all of the different modules on the vehicle. But this tool is also a full blown TPMS sensor tool. If you take a look at the top of the tool, you'll see this TPMS sensor symbol. This is what you're gonna use to generate Xtool's universal TPMS sensors. Seriously guys, this is one powerful scan tool. It even has the ability to do something that Xtool asked me not to show anyone. If you guys wanna find out what that is, you're just gonna have to get your hands on one. Anyway, let's go ahead and scroll back up to to the top and we'll go to engine control we're going to go into read trouble code and here we have a p0087 fuel rail system pressure too low this is the code they told me kept setting in the engine control module and even after replacing the high pressure fuel pump the fuel pump in the tank and the pressure sensor this code still keeps coming back so we're going to back out of here and we're going to go into live data and what I want to look for are any data pids related to the fuel rail pressure so I'm going to scroll down here We've got a lot of data pids here. There's a total of 148. Okay guys, so here we have the fuel pressure. We're gonna select that. And we have the fuel pressure set point value. We also have a deviation of fuel pressure set point. So I'm gonna select that. And we'll go ahead and throw the signal voltage in. So we're gonna hit custom and that's going to bring it down to just the ones we selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change these values over to PSI. We might have to go into the settings for that a few moments later all right guys so unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a way to change these units here now i did try backing all the way out to the main menu and i found where it showed units and i switched them over to uh american or imperial i tried both of them uh, but this just always stays at HPA. now some of you guys might be more familiar with this type of unit measurement however I'm just a dumb American. I don't like to convert these values in my head. It's very difficult for me to try to understand what's happening during my diagnosis if I can't even really understand the numbers that I'm seeing. Now, that's not to say that this isn't a great tool. It really is, but hopefully this is something they can fix in an update. See, when I go to the settings menu here, there's an option to select units. And uh, I've already tried US units, Imperial and metric. Nothing changes. It just always shows the HPA. All right guys, so in the meantime, I'm gonna switch over to using the D9. We're gonna click on auto scan. You can see it automatically ID'd the vehicle. We'll hit okay. We're gonna choose system selection. Now, as you guys can see, this is pretty much the same scan tool as the IP618 TP. It can read all of the same modules and it does a lot of the same functions. So we're gonna go ahead and click on engine control. We'll hit live data. Now I'm gonna find our data PIDs. Here we have the fuel pressure and the fuel pressure set point. However, it's still on HPA, so let me back out and see if I can uh, fix that. So we're gonna go into settings, units. Right now I have it set to uh, US units, so I guess we'll try metric. 
Though I really don't think metric is what we're looking for, but we'll try it. Let's go back in. And here we have the data PIDs again, fuel pressure and the uh, set point. However, it's still saying HPA. Let me try this again. We'll back out again. We'll go back into settings, go back to unit. And this time we'll try Imperial. We'll go back into the vehicle. And once again, here we have the fuel pressure and the fuel pressure set point, and it's still at HPA. Okay, guys, what's happening here? Is there no way to change it? I think it just crashed. All right, guys, so I switched over to my trusty launch. Let's go ahead and click on intelligent diagnosis. You can see it decoded the VIN number there, so we're gonna go ahead and click on diagnostic. I'm gonna go into system selection. We're going to choose the engine control module. I'm gonna go into read data stream. Okay, so there's our fuel pressure and our fuel pressure set point. We'll hit okay. And as you guys can see right now, they're at HPA. We'll switch this over to English and bam, there we have it guys, PSI. That's what we're looking for. I know this might not seem like a big deal, but when it comes to being out in the field doing mobile diagnostic like I do, you need to be able to get through the diagnostic as quickly as possible. And little things like converting units that you're not familiar with is only gonna waste your time and make it even more frustrating. So anyways, while the X tools are great tools, today is just a job for the launch. So as you guys can see right now, the engine is not running. I have the key in the on position. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and graph these and we're gonna watch these numbers while we're cranking it. We can even go ahead and combine these two graphs to make it easier for us to see. So I'm gonna hit combine. And if you guys take a look over here, you can see that the blue line is going to be our actual fuel pressure and the red line is going to be our fuel pressure set point value, which is basically what the computer wants to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. We're gonna watch to see what these do. First, I'm gonna prime the fuel pump by cycling the key off and then back on, and then we're gonna crank it. You guys could hear we did have an extended crank time. And if you take a look at the values right now, take a look at our actual fuel pressure. We're way down at 46 PSI and the pressure that it wants to see is somewhere around 450 PSI. There's a big difference happening right here. Now I know if you're looking at these, you might think that they're close to each other, but the fact is, if you look at the scale over here on the side, you can see that our blue scale up here is going up to 180 and our red scale is up to 1500. So there's a big gap difference in these. Now, if you guys pay attention, after running for a little bit, you can see that our value dropped over here. Now, the reason for that, I believe, is because the engine control module probably set a fault code for the difference in the fuel pressure. Let's try to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key off and turn the ignition on, and we're gonna back out of here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to clear the fault code, clear the fault code, hit yes, clear fault memory completed, hit okay. We're gonna read fault code again, and you'll see that uh, we no longer have any trouble codes, so we'll back out. Then we'll go into our data stream again. We're gonna pull up our fuel data PIDs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. You guys hear that extended crank? It takes a while for it to start. Now take a look at the difference here between the fuel pressure, the actual fuel pressure, and the fuel pressure set point value. Again, we're way up here at 440, 430, and over here we're at 45. Now at this point, you can see that the computer dropped its set point value down to 50. I believe that may be some kind of default strategy. Let's take a look here at the instrument cluster, see if it set a check engine light. Now there's not a check engine light yet, but uh, we can see that obviously the fuel pressure is not able to keep up with the set point value. Now let's see what happens when I rev the engine up. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but the data pids are no longer moving when I rev up the engine. Let me uh, go ahead and add the RPM so that you guys can see the engine speed. All right, now take a look at the RPM. We're sitting at idle at around 700. And again, our fuel pressure 50 on each, and I'm gonna go ahead and rev it. You can see we got up to almost 4,000 RPM. However, these two data pids did not move. So right now they are at substituted values. And so these are basically just default strategies. So if I back out of here, I'm pretty sure that the uh, engine set a code. So we'll go to read fault code. And yeah, there we have it, P0087, fuel rail system pressure too low. So obviously the computer detected a fault pretty early on. As soon as we started up the vehicle, it noticed that the pressure couldn't keep up with the demand. And so it disabled the system and set everything to default values. So now what I wanna do is I wanna try connecting a fuel pressure gauge to the line coming from the fuel pump in the tank going up to the high pressure fuel pump on the engine. 
All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this line here from the high pressure fuel pump. Now, this line is the low pressure line coming from the fuel tank. And so we want to make sure that we're getting sufficient pressure here. You can see that I have my gauge. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it and we'll connect this in line. All right, so I've got the fuel pressure tester connected in line. You guys can see this is my line here going through my Y connector. And then this here goes over to the gauge. Right now, we're reading zero PSI. I'm gonna go ahead and prime the pump over. So we're gonna cycle the key a couple times. One, two. All right, so now we're looking at uh, almost about 50 PSI. Let's go ahead and crank this thing over. All right. You guys can hear that long extended crank. Let's take a look at our fuel pressure. We are right at about 75 PSI. And if we move back over to the scan tool, you can see that, uh, well, we already pretty much went into a default mode again because we're showing 50 PSI on both the actual pressure and the set point value. So it looks to me like we are getting sufficient fuel pressure up to the high pressure fuel pump. Again, we're showing about 75 PSI here and that's coming from the electric pump in the tank, but we're only getting about 50 PSI after the pump. Again, guys, like I mentioned before, they did already replace this pump. They also replaced the pump in the tank and they even replaced the fuel pressure sensor that's on the fuel line underneath this intake manifold. So with all brand new parts, I'm pretty interested to figure out what's going on here. I think the next thing I wanna check is gonna be this solenoid here on the side of the high pressure fuel pump. Now the way this works basically is the computer controls this solenoid using a pulse width modulated signal and that's what opens and closes to allow the fuel pressure to flow. If that solenoid is faulty, we're not gonna be able to get the fuel pressure up to the pressures that the computer is demanding and it's gonna keep setting that code. All right, so I've got my lab scope connected and if you take a look here, you can see that I've got my positive lead on looks like the black wire here now this is just a two wire solenoid so it's a very simple design but if you take a look here you can see that this is actually a sub harness so this harness here connects to the main harness from the actual vehicle so we're going to be checking it directly at the connector at the solenoid now i'm not exactly sure if this is the power side control side or the ground but i'm going to go ahead and start the engine up and we're going to see what we have on the meter okay so let's start this thing up and we'll take a look at the meter here we are showing some activity here. Let's take a look at this. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. Ah, the computer just cut the solenoid off. Let me restart the engine. We'll start this thing back up. And we'll take a look at our waveform here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and jump this up to, uh, let's say, a 50 volt scale, because we got some pretty good spikes happening here. And then I'm going to pause this image before it cuts it out. And then uh, let me shut this engine off and we'll take a look at our data. All right guys, so here we have the capture. I'm sorry about the glare on the screen. I'm doing the best I can. But basically what we're looking at here is the computer control of the solenoid. What I can tell you is so far, this actually looks pretty good. So if you take a look here, you can see that the computer is grounding the solenoid. That lets us know that the computer is in control. We have good power and good ground. And electrically, the solenoid is in good condition. Now, the reason we know that is because we have these big spikes happening here. Now, these big spikes are from the magnetic field coil collapsing every time we stop current flow through the solenoid. So that means electrically, everything here is good. Now, that doesn't mean that we couldn't still have a problem with the solenoid mechanically sticking. It is possible to have a solenoid that has a good electrical coil winding. However, the pencil inside might be getting stuck. So the one thing we could do is try smacking it to see if anything changes. So I'm just gonna give it a few love taps here. Now let's crank this thing over and take a look at our pressures. Okay, so I'm gonna crank the engine over. You guys can see we still have an extended crank time. And if you take a look, we're still sitting somewhere around 45 PSI on the fuel pressure when our set point value is way up at 440. So yeah, that didn't change anything. Now, the other thing we could do to test this solenoid is give it direct power and ground and listen for a clicking noise. So if you guys take a look here, you can see that I went ahead and connected some leads to the pins directly at the solenoid. And one of the leads I have going to the battery negative right over here. And the other lead I have right here, I'm gonna touch it to the battery positive and we're gonna listen for a clicking sound we're gonna see if the solenoid is actually opening and closing. So let's take a listen here. I'm gonna to touch it. You guys hear that? I'm gonna do it again. Let me see if I can get my hand in the view of the camera. Yeah, right here's my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and touch the solenoid and listen closely. It's got a very loud, noticeable click. 
So now that we know we have sufficient fuel pressure getting up to the high pressure fuel pump, and we know that the solenoid is opening and closing, our problem either has to be something mechanically wrong with the fuel pump, or there's an issue with our fuel pressure sensor. A few moments later. All right guys, so fast forward. It looks like we may have figured out what was happening here. If you guys take a look, you can see that uh, we got the high pressure fuel pump removed. And if you take a look down into the hole, you can see that's our camshaft right there. So that down there is the camshaft lobe. And again, we just pulled this piece out and uh, all we have is a spring here on the end. Now, what's missing is that there's supposed to be a piece that goes on the end of this spring, which is basically like a roller. And essentially what it does is it rolls on the camshaft and that's what creates the pumping effect, moving the spring up and down. So essentially because that piece was missing completely, the camshaft was never making contact with the spring and the pump was never pumping. Now, according to the owner of the shop, it was the owner of the vehicle who originally replaced this high pressure fuel pump. So I'm pretty sure what happened was that he went to remove the fuel pump, the roller bearing came out with it. And when he installed the new one, he forgot to put it back in. Anyways, they're gonna look back here and see if they can find a replacement piece because they have a bunch of motors sitting in the back. So maybe we can find one that fits. All right, guys, so fast forward. I apologize. I didn't film uh, the mechanic putting in the roller piece, but they did find one out of a motor they had sitting in the back. And so uh, it was pretty simple. All they did was slide it down into the hole, bolt the fuel pump down. We've got everything connected. And so I'm gonna take you guys inside the vehicle. We'll start this thing up and let's take a look at the scan tool. All right guys, so we're back inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and crank this thing up. And as you guys can see, it starts up right away. Now taking a look at the scan data, you can see our fuel pressure is somewhere around 450. And if you take a look at the set point value, you can see it's right about 450 as well. That's exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see the actual pressure pretty much matching the set point value. That's definitely a fix. Now I already went ahead and cleared the fault code. So if you go back here, you can see that if we read fault code, no more DTC and no more check engine light. That's a fix. So guys, in conclusion, the problem the entire time was that the little roller piece inside of the GDI pump was missing. Now, who forgot to put it back in there? I'm not sure. Like I said, the customer was the one who originally replaced the pump. Then the shop did the pump afterward because they noticed that it wasn't pumping up the pressure. And I guess whenever the shop went in there to replace the pump, uh, they didn't bother to look inside the hole to see if the roller was missing. And so that's how we ended up in the situation where we couldn't get rid of that low pressure code. Like I said, they actually had a couple of these engines sitting in the back of the shop, a couple of blown ones. If you guys didn't know, these Kias are known for blowing engines. And so they had a couple of scrap Kia motors sitting in the back. They were able to pull a roller out of one of those and put it in this engine. Like I said, I'm sorry I didn't film that part, but the mechanic didn't want to be on camera. Anyway, before ending off the video, I did want to mention that since the filming of this video, I have talked to Xtool and they were able to fix our problem that we had with an update. That is one compliment I do have to hand to these guys. Xtool is pretty responsive when it comes to fixing bugs and any other problem they might have with the scan tool. They are really responsive when it comes to your guys' feedback. If you ever have any problem with the tool, make sure you contact technical support and they're usually pretty good about getting it taken care of. Now, if you guys are interested in the Xtool, I will leave a link in the description down below. Also, you will find a coupon code so that you can save some money off your purchase. And like I mentioned before, this tool is a TPMS tool. And so they do have their own proprietary TPMS sensors. These sensors are universal and can be used to duplicate or clone most any other TPMS sensor on the market. So if you guys are looking for a scan tool slash TPMS tool combo, I would definitely check it out. Now on another note, I would like to add that on the latest update for the launch X431 Pro 3S Plus, you will find that they finally unleashed the beast. The latest update includes full topology functionality, which is something that previously was only found on the more expensive version, like the Pad Pro 5. So if you guys have been on the fence about buying this scan tool, this might just be one more reason to pick this one. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, Make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.